In this video, we'll discuss negating quantifiers. So, we want to know how we can negate statements containing quantifiers. When we need to negate a statement including a quantifier, we first have to negate the quantifier and then the predicate. So, for example, if we have a universal quantifier, we have to change it to an existential quantifier and vice versa. We would change an existential quantifier to a universal quantifier and then we also have to negate the predicate. And some to build some intuition about this, you can think of how we check a statement including a universal quantifier. That is the same as a predicate holding for every single value the variable can take in its universe. So that's the conjunction of all of the predicates over the universe of the values for the variables. Then if we think about De Morgan's rule, then you would negate that conjunction and that would mean you would negate all of the predicates and you would get a disjunction. So when you get a disjunction of the negation of those predicates, that's essentially the same as saying, well, there must exist some value in this universe of values the variables can take such that the negation of the predicate is true. So that is where this comes from, so where the negation, so that's where we have when we negate the statement including the universal quantifier, so for any x in S such that the predicate holds, this negation is that there exists an x in the universe of variables values the variables can hold such that the predicate does not hold. And so that's why I was mentioning to you thinking of this in terms of the universal quantifier as a conjunction of all of the, the values. So P of X1 and P of X2 and P of X3 so forth and when you think that x1 and x2 and x3 are all in s so then when i negate that you would get using de morgan's you would get not p of x1 or not p of x2 or not p of x3 and so forth so that would be the same as there exists some x in S such that the negation of the predicate holds. So let's just show how we can apply this now. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to write these, these statements in predicate logic and then negate them. So the first statement is any integer greater than or equal to 2 is prime. So one way that we can do this is just do it so for any n which is in z greater than or equal to 2 and I could make this another condition if I want to we can say that is prime but if we were using the exact same thing before, had before, we could just make z an, an integer. It's, it's fine. Now, when we negate this, we would say that there exists. So we negate the universal quantifier, and it becomes there exists. The universe stays the same. So I'm just, just for brevity, I'm just going to use the same universe, n in the integer is greater than or equal to 2, that is not prime. And 
the way that we can see that the negation is actually true is we just have to consider 4. So let n equal to 4. 4 is greater than or equal to 2 and 4 is not prime. So we can see that either a statement or its negation is true and here we have the negation true. So this statement is false. Now, let's look at an example where we negate the existential quantifier. Now, to negate a statement including quantifiers, we have to first negate the quantifier and then the predicate. So here, to negate the existential quantifier, we have to change it to a universal quantifier, and then we have to negate the predicate. So here, if we have the statement, there exists, and x and s such that the predicate holds, we negate the existential quantifier, it becomes a universal quantifier, and we negate the predicate. So when we negate the statement there exists an x such that p of x holds, that will become for any x in s the predicate does P does not hold, not, not P of X. So let's see how we can write these two statements in terms of zoo. So we're going to let S our s be set of all zoos. And our predicate is going to be P of x is going to be that zoo x has no animals. And the way that we can now express these statements in terms of predicate logic is there exists a zoo with no animals, so that means there exists some zoo so that's an x in s, the set of all zoos, such that p of x holds. So there exists a zoo with no animals. And then when we negate that statement, we have to negate the existential quantifier. It's saying for any zoo. So that's x in s is a zoo, not p of x means has animals. So not when we negate that, the predicate zoo x has no animals, we're saying that the zoo has at least one animal. So that's every zoo. So every zoo is that for any x in s. So that's any zoo, every zoo is using the universal quantifier has at least one animal. We have captured that in the predicate that the zoo has no animals, so when we negate that, the zoo must have at least one animal. Now, let's do one more practice problem looking at negating quantifiers. And here, we don't even need to specify what the predicate is, but just for you to consider later, let the predicate be for p, x, y, z, let the predicate be x plus y equals z. That's the predicate. And you can think about whether the statement or its negation is true as an exercise. But first, let's just negate the statement. So when we negate the statement, there exists an x such that for any y, there exists a z 
such that the predicate holds, in this case x plus y equals c, if you'd like, we first have to negate each of the quantifiers. So there exists x becomes for any x. And this is equivalent, this is the negation that I'm doing here. Then I have to negate the universal quantifier, and that becomes for any y, y becomes there exists a y, and then there exists x, excuse me, there exists z becomes for any z. Then we have to negate the predicate, not p of x, y. And in this case, it would be x plus y does not equal z. So as an exercise, given this predicate that I've given here, is the negation true or is the original statement true? So that's something you can think about for that predicate, or you can think about using other predicates to see when the statement or its negation would be true.